Amen. I'd like to welcome you here this morning on a nice, warm, three-day weekend. Hallelujah to be in the house of the Lord on this great day. Got a lot of things going on today. We're going to start by singing in just a few moments. But before we do, it is the first Sunday, so it's Name Tag Sunday. We wear our name tags, and every time we have something different that we highlight. And this week, because it's Labor Day today, it's your most unique or noteworthy job, and uh, so I have I did some tuck pointing, which is repairing brick buildings in Chicago during Bible college for one summer. So that's my most unique one. 
Look around at what other people do as unique jobs, and I saw some really awesome ones already, and uh, so thank you so much for uh, participating if you can. If you're watching from home and you'd like to send over your most unique job or most noteworthy job, we'll reference that along the way. But we're going to go ahead and get started, sing the first hymn in the hymnal. It's number one, Brother Eric and company will lead us in that song, then no other name. Brother Eric will open in prayer, and then we'll do Haven of Rest. Grab a hymnal and stand. Number one, Brother Eric. All right, let's sing number one. I stand amazed at the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful, is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden. of the Lord, no other name but the name of Jesus is worthy of glory and worthy of honor and worthy of power and all praise. No other name but the name of Jesus, no other name but the name But the name of Jesus is worthy of glory and worthy of honor and worthy of power and all praise. Amen. We'll open with a word of prayer, and after that we'll sing 378 Haven of Rest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sunday morning, Lord. I thank you for all who are here gathered to worship your name. I pray, God, that you'd speak to our hearts through the music sung today and that your Holy Spirit would speak to us through the message of your word. Be with Pastor as he preaches, and we thank you so much for the freedom of gathering that we have in this country, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your name be exalted and be with us here today. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's sing 378, Haven of Rest.
wild, stormy deep. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the got a couple announcements for us here this morning actually quite a few and let me pull my glasses out if I can find them do I have glasses somewhere maybe I don't have glasses I'll have to find them at some point and I'll do my best uh brother Frank's looking right now for my glasses oh I got it brother Frank <laughs> wrong pocket <laughs> brother Frank just shakes his head he, he has everything in the right place and knows where it is <laughs> I, I'm when my wife's around, I do, so hey, without her, I'm in trouble. A couple quick announcements for us, and we will be having the teens gather today for their ascend, so all the teenagers, 7th grade to 12th grade, at the end of the announcement time, when we sing the next group of songs, you can dismiss to the audit, to the river room, and uh, Brian and Becca are in there for you, but I want you to stick around for the announcements, because we got lots going on. As a matter of fact, today is going to be a lengthy announcement day, so I'll po- apologize in advance. Today is Labor Day Sunday the weekend of of Labor Day weekend, and tonight we're going to have a gathering at my house. The address is in the bulletin, so make sure you grab a bulletin if you don't know where we live. And if you think you know where we live, you might want to grab it anyways, because when you get turned around in some of those sub-developments, it's easy to get lost. So grab a bulletin. The address is there, 5 o'clock tonight. We were going to do a full potluck where people just brought stuff, but... um, with as hot as it is, I thought you might not want to cook. So we ordered chicken, lots of chicken. And so there's going to be enough chicken to feed us all twice over. So come, bring something to go with chicken, maybe a pasta salad, potato salad, cookies, bag of chips, something of that nature. If you already made something, that's totally fine. But uh, the more the merrier. But I didn't want to put the burden of cooking on you. And uh, so 5 o'clock tonight, we'll meet at our house. And there is a swimming pool there if you'd like to swim. We also could baptize. And if anybody's wanting baptism, let me know about that. Uh, But we'll have food time. We'll have a brief little, just a three or four minute devotional thought from the Word along the way. We're also going to be doing a pool billiards pool tournament and a uh, very easy way to play you and it's called three ball most people have never heard of it before even people who've played pool so uh, if you've never played pool in your life it's okay you you can join and you might even win so come five o'clock at our house tonight and um We'll, uh, we'll make sure we have a good time. Most of us don't have um, a place to be early in the morning tomorrow for work. Most of us have the day off. And so these Sunday nights on three-day weekends are really good opportunities for us to gather. So uh, hopefully you'll come tonight, and uh, we'll stick around till 8, 9 or so, or however long uh, you all stay. I go to bed at 9, so he's locked the door on the way out, and uh, there's more truth to that statement than you even know. But, uh, but anyways, love to have you tonight. And uh, bring something if you can. 
Um, then let me give you a bunch of quick announcements. Tomorrow, 11 a.m., we're doing Senior Saints at the brand-new Olive Garden addresses in the bulletin. The reason I chose 11 instead of 12 noon is because it's brand-new. The lines are going to get long. want you to be um, able to... Um, not, so we don't have to wait as long. So 11 o'clock, note the time change. First Monday of the month, we do Senior Saints. And uh, then Friday is a teen activity, 6 o'clock right here. If you're in with a teen group, they'll mention that, so I'll let you let them talk about that. Saturday morning, I want to do a prayer and breakfast. 9 a.m., I want to gather whoever wants to. We have so many things planned for the fall time of our church we have outreaches planned, we have programs planned, new things we're introducing, and I think the best way to start anything is through prayer. So uh, I kind of juggled the schedule a little bit. We were originally going to do the outreach on, the, uh, on that Saturday, uh, the 10th, but we're going to actually move that to the 17th because I just want to start with prayer. So two things come at 9 a.m. on Saturday. We'll spend about an hour reading scripture, praying together. You will not be asked to pray publicly, and there'll be several of us who will pray publicly. And if you'd like to come and just be a silent prayer, that's totally fine. I would never ask somebody to, to do that. Some pastors would. I, I'm not going to do that to you. So 9 to 10, we'll have a time of just prayer and Bible reading together, praying for our church. And then at, from 10 to 11, we'll have some breakfast and fellowship together. Incidentally, if anybody would like to help out with breakfast, maybe a couple of people do like breakfast casseroles or fruit platters, fruit plates, things of that nature, that would be great. Let me know today. Then Saturday night is the uh, awards dinner for those who did the devotions over the summer, and you know who you are. Let me know if you've not already done so, so I can properly plan. Look on the screen there, Essential Workers Appreciation Day. We've wanted to do this for quite some time. I would call essential workers anybody who is right there with the public over the time of the pandemic. I'm talking about people who work at grocery stores, people certainly in the, in the medical field, uh, nurses and doctors, um, law enforcement personnel, anybody who would be a frontline worker, you might call them, or an essential worker, people who put themselves in harm's way in order to make sure that things continued on. And so on September 25th, I want to invite all those who are essential workers. If you think they're an essential worker and they're your friend, grab one of these cards. We printed 80 of them. They're on the back on the way out and say, I think you're an essential worker. And my pastor wants to say thank you and give you a small gift on September 25th at 11 a.m. Give them one, invite them to come with you. We have many in our church who come every week. I see by the cliff up here, he worked there was a while you were working like 80 hours a week by the cliff or something crazy like that. And uh, just for about a year in he, by the cliff, he does not like recognition. He's mad at me for saying that. But, uh, but, but people like by the cliff, many in our church are in the, in the um, medical field. And uh, so we just want to say thank you, present a small gift, and have a message themed on essential workers. So that's important to start getting the word out. Grab one of those. Give me the next uh, slide or screen, if you will, Adonis. Save the date. That's our anniversary, October 9th, 2022. We want you in that picture. We want your smiling face. And uh, there's about 10 of us that are in every single year. And we didn't do it on the 9th because of COVID. We we're going to try to just take a bunch of pictures and put them together, but it didn't turn out very good. So we didn't do that. But we have one through eight in the hallway. And then last year was our 10th anniversary. So there's no nine. And, uh, so, but uh, I think Dazza, you're in every single one, I believe. I think the Franks in every single one, our family. I think Ruth was with her sister one year, so she missed a year. I think the Edwards family is in every single one. Anybody else in every single year? So, maybe Laura Sanchez, maybe. And uh, Paul Dodd would be in every single one as well, of course. You missed one? A grandbaby being born. We'll Photoshop you in, Brother Paul. And uh, so... Um, but, uh, yeah, we want you in the picture, 11th anniversary, and so save that date, October 9th. The one last announcement, if you give me the next slide there, Adonis, we printed these little 3 by 5 cards, uh, say, uh, See You Sunday, that's kind of the theme we've been running with. I have a, go I have a um, uh, uh, admonition for you, and a challenge, probably a better word, I'm looking for that perfect word, and I couldn't find it, but... Uh, uh, when the perfect words escape me, it frustrates me. But anyways, a challenge, if you will, for you. That's still not the word I want, but we'll call it that. There's five weeks until our anniversary, and I think we could pass out one of these per day for the next five weeks. That's 35 of these that we give to somebody individually. I know we could go canvas a neighborhood, and we'll do that as well. 
But I'm talking about the person at the post office, the person at the bank, your neighbor, your coworkers. So what I'd like for you to do is average. You don't, have to, you don't have to do one a day, but I want you to try to average one per day. I have conveniently bundled these in bundles of seven. So every week you can grab one. You can grab one today, and uh, you can pass it out. And um, uh, then uh, uh, maybe you miss Tuesday and, or Tuesday and Thursday, and Friday you get caught up. Next week you grab seven more. So on the way out at the Connect table, there's little bundles of seven of these, and they're in the little basket there. Grab a bundle of seven. That's a week's worth. Once you do a week's worth, do the second week. So five weeks till our anniversary. And uh, matter of fact, we started knocking on doors five weeks before our church started. It was September 5th, Saturday, uh, the very first day we knocked, I'm sorry, Friday, the very first day we knocked on doors. And uh, so, um, so so we're right in that wheelhouse of uh, just getting the word out. So anyway, uh, those lots of announcements. Thank you for being patient. And I saw Carmela here today. Carmela's got a little baby Christian. We're so, um, we prayed for you a lot, and we're so thankful that you're here today. And uh, little is little Christian here? Awesome. He's, what, two months old now? Three months old. So good to see you here. So proud of you. Keep up the good work. Them little ones are a lot of work, we know, and uh, but they do grow up along the way. And so let's do this. Uh, if you're junior high or high school age, during the right when we stand up, you can dismiss to the, uh, to the river room to go to your Ascend class. Everybody else sing with us. So let's go ahead and stand with Eric. Lee's in two songs, and then we'll have our offering and our scripture and our offering. So let's all stand. a little faster. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, thou art worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor. Number 75, the sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of the blessed 
and our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hollow our days. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Amen. Thank you for singing. Thank you, Ellie. We're going to go ahead and read the scripture for today. It's out of John 9, and it's four verses. It's one through four. Let's read them together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Amen. We'll have the ushers come forward, and then we'll collect an offering, and we'll say a word of prayer for that, and then Abby has a special. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you again for this Sunday morning. Thank you for church and um, for everyone gathered here today, Lord. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. As Pastor preaches, Lord, may we all take a truth in our heart and remember it throughout the week. Thank you for this offering and for those who continue to give. And we pray for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 My turn. Amen. <laughs> Take your Bibles and find the book of John. We'll also be in the book of Proverbs and a couple other places as well. And uh, Amen. Appreciate you being so faithful. What a great church we have. So thrilled with what the Lord's done and is doing and will continue to do. We do have a lot of prayer needs within our church family. And uh, some of those I mentioned in Sunday school, uh, our and uh, just uh, we know Brother Dick Bohr is having surgery a week from tomorrow. We know Maureen has upcoming surgery. And I just got word that Brian, Ryan Bunton is in the hospital as well. And he's got some um, just some tests they're doing on some kidney function. So keep Brother Ryan in your prayers. That's new to us, that prayer request. The other two, of course, we've known uh, for a little bit of time and such. So let's have a word of prayer. And then we'll jump into the thoughts today from 
the book of John. Father in heaven, we thank you again for this time together. We ask that you bless mightily. We think of these three referenced here uh, with various needs, and uh, we just uh, lift them up to you, Lord, asking you to do exceeding abundantly above what we ask or think, and uh, that your hand of healing would be upon them. Guide the doctors and nurses as far as surgeries go, and uh, just as they're trying to evaluate different symptoms and such, and we pray that you'd give good resolution to the choicest of your servants here from our church, and uh, lifting up specifically um, Marie Cox, um, Dick Bora, and Ryan Bunton, and others as well. We've been praying for Kayla for quite some time, and just continue to pray for her as well. And uh, we thank you for all that you've done. We pray that you do a work now in this message. We give you the praise, honor, and glory, for it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, most of the holidays we celebrate have a Christian attachment to them, if you think about it. Uh, Christmas, of course, uh, Easter or Resurrection Sunday, as I like to call it, and those are the quintessential Christian holidays, and rightly so, and it makes church oftentimes uh, busy, rightly uh, focusing on uh, the purpose of of those respective holidays. Thanksgiving's right there in that wheelhouse because we're thankful to God uh, and the first and foremost to Him. If you think about other holidays like Father's Day, Mother's Day, things of that nature, they're not quite as connected to uh, maybe Christianity, but they are. And so maybe not so much directly, but indirectly. And then I'm a very patriotic person, and we have holidays like Memorial Day, Veterans Day, um, the 4th of July, and uh, those holidays as a patriotic Christian are very involved from a church standpoint as well. And so because of that, for 22 years of pastoring, only two occasions have I not been in church on a three-day weekend for a holiday, and I just feel like there's lots going on. And it's really nice, the, the flexibility of my schedule. I'm not at all saying, woe is me, rather... Um, I only work one day a week, amen, Sunday, that's all I do. I'm only kidding by that. But, uh, uh, but uh, I'm able to be a little flexible during the weekdays, and so it just affords us the ability to take, you know, Monday or Tuesday and get away. But for the weekends and the three-day weekends, and there's five to seven three-day weekends per year, and I'm almost never gone on those because so much of church revolves around celebrating those holidays, especially the Christian holidays, and I love it. I'm thankful that I get to do that. But Labor Day is a little bit different than all those that I mentioned because you don't have that, um, and I realize work is a very spiritual thing. We're going to be talking about work today, uh, but as far as it doesn't have the merit of Christmas, doesn't have the merit of Easter Sunday, doesn't have the merit of even Veterans Day, things of that nature, Memorial Day, and it does have merit, don't get me wrong, And uh, but as far as from a church standpoint, maybe not quite as much. And so I did a little research on Labor Day. It's 128 years now. We've celebrated Labor Day as a national holiday, and uh, during the Industrial Revolution, the 16-hour days, six days a week, workload placed upon many of the laborers and the child labor that was going on uh, warranted uh, protest and advances that we as a nation have made. And one thing about our nation that I've known is when we do something that's not right, it may take us time, but we're ever correcting those things. And I realize we're still in the correcting process, but uh, tell me a place you'd rather be than here. And uh, I love what God has done through just the freedoms of for the church, especially from a pastoral perspective as a nation. So Labor Day, we honor the righting of wrongs of the Industrial Revolution era, and we just stop and we appreciate hard work. And I, for one, can appreciate rolling up sleeves. I can uh, appreciate the sweat of the brow. I like accomplishment. I like achievement. I like to see advancement in things. And so on days like uh, Labor Day and uh, is just kind of focusing in on what has been done and the work that you've done. And uh, there's this little comic strip, like a newspaper style comic strip. It's got one lad there, youngster, and he's underneath a tree. He's got his hat brimmed down. He's kind of resting there, and his friend comes up to him, and in the first still of the comic, it says, uh, to, he says, you ought to get up and go to work. And the next one, and he says, in the little bubble there, says, why? And then the next bubble says, so you can uh, make some money. 
Then why? So that you can save up some money. Why? So that you can someday retire. Why? So you can sit around and do nothing. And I said, why? I'm already doing all, nothing. Why go to all that trouble to do nothing? And uh, I don't like that sentiment, honestly. I, for one, say those of you who are retired, you've earned the right to be retired. You've put forth the efforts of 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years in your respective jobs or however many you had to work. And so I, for one, appreciate work. I, for one, appreciate accomplishment. I like to see things done. I worked in a trucking company in Bible college, and I always like to load the trucks rather than unload the trucks because, for me, when you close that door of a loaded truck, there's an accomplishment. And I realize when you unload the truck, there's still an accomplishment. But when you unload it, it's empty. You sweep it out, and then you're done, right? And when you load the truck, you close that door, and there goes your masterpiece of puzzle putting in, putting all the boxes in order. And uh, I still have nightmares about working at a trucking company, just so you know. But I like work. I like working hard. And so today, this being Labor Day weekend, I wanted to talk a little bit about work. Look at John chapter 9. We're going to be in Proverbs, back to John, maybe a couple other places along the way as well. But in John chapter 9, it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. And uh, I like the fact I must work, but I must also work the works. And I have uh, a deadline to work those works. And so that's the little outline. And the first thought I want to do, again, work, point one. Works are the works of God, point two. And point three is while. So work, works, and while. And uh but let's look back to the book of Proverbs real quick, and I want to show you some uh, passages from Proverbs that I think are just perfect for the day, perfect for the week, perfect for um, just imparting to the youth. And we have a lot of hardworking young men and young ladies at our church, and uh, I'm in awe at how much you do, and I'm appreciative of the fact that you do work hard. And uh, I know uh, the our generation sometimes looks at the younger generation and says, stop being so lazy and stop doing this. I actually see a lot of hardworking folk. I actually see a lot who are going and putting forth an effort, and I applaud you, and I commend you to continue and to work and to work hard, and we need uh, the youth to bear the yoke and to work hard and such, and so I admonish you to continue and work and work hard and be the industrious people that you are. And uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 14 Let's look at about four or five different passages in Proverbs. Most of us are familiar with the fact that Proverbs, the book of humanly speaking, was penned by Solomon to his son Rehoboam, and he was preparing his young son, and Solomon was the wisest man, and it was a father telling his son to work and work hard and do a good job. And in Proverbs chapter 14, I want to show you verse number 23, um, and it says this, In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips tendereth, tendereth, tendeth only to penury. And so in all labor there is profit just to get up and to work hard and to do a good job and to be the, the, the best employee. And by the way, there was a day to advance. You had to have maybe uh, unique skill sets and you had to have maybe some training that others didn't have. I have found, though, now that if you just will work hard, be there on time and work your days and, and only call in sick when it's absolutely sick and work and do and be, if you would just show up, you're going to advance because so few even do that. Again, uh, I've seen a great workforce here, and I've seen people who are 19, 20, 21, 22 years old, mid-20s even, advancing through their work places because they're working hard. So again, all labor there is profit. Somehow we get this mindset that I just want to go and put a couple bucks down and they give me back a ticket and I become a multimillionaire the rest of my life. I mean, if I could just win the lottery, everything would be great. And wealth gotten by vanity, amen, we hear, uh, shall be diminished. And so uh, again, there's something awesome about work. There's something awesome about accomplishment. There's something awesome about pillowing your head at night knowing that you put forth an eight-hour day with an eight-hour pay and you did what you're supposed to do. And again, schedules are different. Some people work, you know, 313s. I had an airline mechanic who worked on airplanes. He, worked, he was a pastor also. He worked Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 
He'd work three 13-hour shifts. That's, I guess, not quite a 40-hour week, but a, an hour shy of that. And then he would pastor Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, so that's, you know, everybody's schedules are a little different. Not everybody works a nine to five, uh, five days a week. But we see this in all labor, there is profit. What a truth. It's a biblical truth, and I want to admonish us on Labor Day to be hardworking people. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. If a task, Abraham Lincoln said, is worthy of you doing, it's worthy of you doing right. We ought to do all that we do and, and, and be the laborers. Uh, the old adage, the harder I work, the luckier I get, rings true. Uh, success before work is only found in the dictionary, somebody else said. And uh, success is usually on the other side of overalls and work boots, another person said. And work is a spiritual thing. It's a good thing to work. It's good to go and to put forth that effort. And I'll, and I'll just say this. There's just something that, that, that chips away at somebody who's unable to work when they should work. And, and I've just seen it. And I realized I, I had a, 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 just a fine man at my previous pastorate who was about my age, so in his 30s at the time, who was injured to the point that he couldn't work. And it just really ate at him, and it really bothered And again, so those anomaly things happen on occasion. We get that. But it, I could see the effect on him, and it wasn't by choice. It was just by the fact that he was injured so, so severely in his work. But it's just it's good to go work. It's awesome. And uh, we did work here, and we all put our most unique jobs. I saw Ruth, and she put the most noteworthy job being a mother. And that was awesome, Ruth. Good call there. And there's a lot of work when they're little ones, and, uh, but it's a good work. And so work is a good thing. Let's look at some more verses in the book of Proverbs. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. Did you know the word sluggard only appears in the book of Proverbs? And it appears a half a dozen times, and in uh, Proverbs chapter 6, it says in verse 6, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider This is a dad talking to his son. Stop being lazy! Go get to work! And uh, uh, some fathers might have to do that on occasion. And, uh, but go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, Overseer, a ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long, how long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little, fold, a little slumber, a little fold in the hands of sleep, so shall thy poverty come. And, and again, I would admonish us to not, and, and everybody works different schedules, and some of you guys I know work until 2 and 3 and 4 in the morning, and it's not going to get up at 6 o'clock. I saw a funny little clip that said, um, you know, uh, the same dad who says at 7 in the morning you're going to sleep your life away is taking a nap at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on his chair. So I get that too. And, uh, but, uh, but again, just the, the slugger there. And we use the word slug. You know what a slug is? Like a snail with no shells, a slug. And they're the slowest guys, and they're just, the, and uh, the word slug, because it's so slow, comes from the word sluggard, and a sluggard is the opposite of somebody who just rolls up the sleeves and works and gets the job done and does a good job at what they do. And uh, uh, look at Proverbs chapter 24. If you're watching from home, which we had about a dozen or so watching from home, and I'd like to welcome you, and I'm glad you're able to watch from home. And I saw on there, when I just went on earlier, Dominic was there, so good to see you, Dominic. On There's about 13, I believe, total, but the few that who said hello, and there's one I didn't recognize the name, and then there was also um, the Edwards family watching from home. So those that I saw on the, the channel, uh, welcome you by way of technology, but you see the title, and the title of the message is Sl uh, Slugs and Sloths. Slugs and Sloths. The slugs are the slow ones. The sloths are the slow ones also. And the word slothful appears 15 times in the Bible. 11 of those times appears in the book of Proverbs. So we have we have the slugs and the sloths. That's the title of the sermon on the YouTube channel People who just will not put forth the effort. Look at verse 30 of chapter 24 of Proverbs. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles that covered the face thereof. The stone wall of there was broken down. I saw it and considered it well and looked upon it and received instruction. 
a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that uh, as as and I want as an armed man. So I went by the field of the slothful. Again, the word slothful appears eleven times. The word slugger and. Eleven of the fifteen times it appears in the Bible are the book of Proverbs, and the only book of the Bible that the word sluggard appears is the six times it appears in the book of Proverbs. And so it just shows us that the power and the necessity of good old-fashioned hard work. If a task, as I said earlier, is worthy of you doing, it's worthy of you doing right and put forth an effort. Let's put forth an effort in all that we do. Uh, let me show you one more passage here in the book of Proverbs, and then we'll get back to the book of uh, the Gospel of John. Proverbs chapter 31. And one of the most interesting things about the Proverbs 31 lady is how hard she works. And I realize watching my wife work these last uh, 23 and a half years of having children, and then before that, of course, as well. Um, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to rear children, and, and of course, dads, you need to be heavily involved in that as well. But I think the burden more falls on the lady for a lot of reasons, and it's a hard work, it's a lot of work, but it's a good work, and it's a worthy work. Put forth that effort. Verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? It goes on to talk a little bit about her. In verse 13 it says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth forth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, giveth meat to her household and a portion to the maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strength and honor uh, and strength in her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She lay her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all the household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh her coverings with tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And it goes on to talk about her. But again, the most you know, um, noteworthy thing of this Proverbs 31 lady is the fact that she's always doing and so on Labor Day weekend, we get an extra day off just because you've earned it, you've worked hard, you've done a lot, you've put forth the hours, and I, somebody are say, somebody's saying, Pastor, I don't have tomorrow off, by the way, I got to work, so I get that too for some. But many people have off, and most businesses that are Monday through Friday type businesses are closed tomorrow for Labor Day, so you've earned the right to have that day off. And as we focus on that, we just want to say that work is a spiritual thing and we ought to be hard workers. Let's go back to John where we started, John chapter 9. And there's a lot about John 9 that's important. And I want to show you the work of the works that Jesus talked about, though. And so Jesus said, I must work the works. And Jesus was very busy in his earthly ministry, always working, always doing, and such. Verse 4, again, I must work. The next thought there is the works. And I want to just point out the importance of doing the works of God. And I'll say this, that your family is a work of God. And, the, and I'm for working hard, and I'm for going, putting in eight hours work for eight hours pay, and I'm for you being the best employee at your job because that represents Christ well. But sometimes people get so focused on making that almighty dollar. And we worship and serve the dollar in America just to get more money and to get more things. And I would submit to you today, the Bible says, "Whoso." Um, well, my, I have, a, I have a, a, a spoof on a Bible verse. And whoso gains the whole world and loses his own family has destroyed his own soul. And I've kind of jumbled that verse, obviously. But uh, again, to gain the whole world and lose your own soul, not good. But to gain the whole world and lose your own family and put forth an effort and play ball with your son and, and coach your kids' little league and, and be there for your girls' gymnastic re, uh, things and their violin recitals and be there and give them their flowers when they uh, go and they do their performance and they do their spelling bee. Be there for them. You say, my business is making it so that I can't. And it might be you got to get a different business. And you can talk to somebody about that. But if your business is making you so busy that you can't be there for the kids, I know pastors that are my age that travel all over the world preaching. And they're gone every week. And I'm thinking to myself, what about home? What about kids? And I, I coached for my kids for, for Sam's basketball. I, I didn't even know how to coach. I got a book, 
Learning Basketball for Dummies. They literally had that book. Coaching Basketball for Dummies. And uh, I played a lot of football growing up. played a lot of baseball growing up. Didn't play a lot of basketball as, as far as team sport goes growing up just because we, um, well, you can probably figure out why. <laughs> Learn. Do the, your family is worth that investment. No amount of dollars will replace a child. I, I know being rich is the answer. Being poor is not the answer either. I get that. And, you know, the Bible says if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. And the, the Bible says that if you don't care for your own, you're worse than an infidel also. So, yeah, you got to go. I, I know people use that for justification to not get a job. No, get a job and get up at 3 in the morning and go work a job from 4 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon if you have to. Because there's that job out there somewhere. It might only pay you $22 an hour, but that's okay because you don't have to make a whole lot of money. But you have to put forth the effort into your family because that is eternal. And if you have a job where you make good money, awesome. And if you have a job that you can take good vacations, awesome. But that is not the driving force. The driving force is putting forth that effort to your family. Because that, I must work the works. And the works of God is the family that God has given to us. God has blessed us with a family. God's work. Also, things of the church. Thank you for being here on a holiday weekend. And as many who aren't, and that's okay that they're not too, by the way. They might be traveling. They might be doing any number of things. But I am thankful that you're here. This is the work of God. In two weeks, we're going to have a big driving outreach on a Saturday. I hope you can join us. I hope you can take me up on the challenge to take 35 tracks and give 35 tracks to 35 individuals over a 35-day span of time. That's a good thing to do. The works of God, I must work the works. Jesus said, I must work. Didn't stop there, though. I must work the works of him that sent me. And so the works of God, our family, our church work, God's work. And, and by the way, sometimes there's God's work outside of the church work, and sometimes the, the God's work is within the church work, and God might be using you right now to witness to a co-worker, to help out a neighbor. William Carey, famous missionary, he cobbled shoes, and they asked him about his job of cobbling shoes, and he said this, my real business is to preach the gospel and win the lost. I cobble shoes to pay the expenses. <laughs> Got to do it sometimes. So uh, Labor Day weekend, uh, work the works. Look at verse 4 again. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. There is deadlines out there, and we don't know when our deadline is. The last is the while. Let me give you a quick story about my youth pastor as a teenager, when I was a teenager. Uh, Clint Miller had been a multimillionaire before his conversion. He actually, in his young uh, teenage and early adult years, he rubbed shoulders with all kinds of famous people. He grew up in and around Hollywood, and he was into music, and he actually was very good friends and remained very good friends with Johnny Cash uh, for years and years and years and years and years, and as well as some of the actors and actresses, people you'd know by name. And then he went into business in his mid-20s, got married, and for about 10 years he built a multi-million dollar business, and my pastor won him to Christ at his living room, and he kind of segued out of business and went into ministry work. His first job was to be a youth pastor at the church I grew up in, and uh, he was a man who had had thousands of employees, and he's working for a young pastor at the time, Pastor Goddard, and uh, never had an employee at all. And so, but he, that was part of his training, he's being our youth pastor. I was very good friends with his son, Cheyenne. He was one grade older than me. And uh, about the time my senior year of high school, he actually went to start his own church and in Escondido, California, North County Baptist Church. And he did that for about 30 years, pastoring there in Escondido. About three summers ago, um, in August, he, uh, he was about 70 at the time, and um, he just passed away suddenly. It was pretty sad. It was pretty traumatic for me. He had been my youth pastor, you know, 30 years prior. Got him a phone call, or maybe I saw it on Facebook that he had passed away. Well, his son, Cheyenne, again, my age, one grade older than me. In fact, yesterday, September 3rd, was Cheyenne's 50th birthday. And uh, Cheyenne was, he went to Bible college when we all went, but he really wasn't that into all that stuff. Good guy, but just not really into it. Went back and, and uh, worked and served as a layman at his dad's church for all those years. About three years ago when his dad passed away, 
Cheyenne just really felt this, you know, he was never the, the guy you'd think would do it, but just through a series of events, he took the church as the pastor. And he's doing a good job. You know, he's just trying and, 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 and just kind of continuing his dad's work and, and really rose to the challenge. And a week and a half ago, my good buddy Cheyenne at 49 years old suddenly passed away himself, if you can believe that. 49. He's got a young family. He's got one adult son and two school-aged children. And it's a good reminder to us that there's a while for all of us. Look at the verse again. I must work the works of him that sent me. By the way, yesterday, September 3rd, Cheyenne's 50th birthday would have been. It's also the day of his uh, celebration of life service at the church that his dad started and pastored for 30 years and that he pastored for three years. On his birthday, on his 50th birthday. I must work the works of him that sent me while this day because the night cometh. We're not guaranteed. We think, oh, when I get to be such and such age, I'll do thus and such. We don't know. Let's put forth the effort. Let's spend the time with the kids. Let's instill in them while we have a chance. And maybe God will give us the ability to do it to the grandkids. And maybe he'll give us the ability to do it to the great grandkids too. I don't know. It could even be the great, great grandkids. I know people have five generations. I know those people. We don't know how long God has given to us. Our Lord served for 33 and a half years. And his death obviously was willing to to save mankind. I get all that. So again, the the, the sermon is sloths and slugs because of those passages there in Proverbs. And we see the passage here in John chapter 9. I got to work because work's a good thing. Be a good worker, be a hard worker, do a good job. But let's also realize we must work the works because the works of God are the important works. And let's also realize that there are deadlines. And at some point, we will have, you know, uh, no souls to win in heaven. There's things that we can do here on this side of eternity that we can't do in glory. And I'll just say this, it wouldn't surprise me if we heard a trumpet sometime soon. I'm even so come Lord Jesus. I mean, it would not surprise me if we have uh, 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 just a few, and I'm not saying it, I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if it happened. I must work the works of him that sent me while this day. The night cometh when no man can work. All predicated on this man that Jesus healed that was born blind. Jesus worked hard. He worked the works of God, and he knew there was a deadline coming. And so let's put forth an effort for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be a working church. Let's be a serving church. Let's, when somebody has a need, let's rise to the occasion and, and bring them a meal. And let's uh, put forth that uh, Christian spirit that we already do. Let's continue that. And if we need to increase it, let's increase it. That's good work. Let's work with our children. Let's teach them the Bible. Let's throw a ball with our sons and our daughters. And let's, let's teach our girls how to bump, set, and spike. And let's teach them how to be prim and proper as well. And, and uh, teach, our, teach chivalry to our, to our boys. And to teach them how to shake a hand firmly and look somebody square in the eyes and, and to work hard. And let's teach them all the things that are important. Let's work the works while we have a chance to work the works. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time together. We're thankful for this Labor Day weekend. We're thankful for the biblical principle of hard work. We see the great wise King Solomon imparting wisdom from you, Lord, that you channeled through him through your preserved word. But humanly speaking for his son Rehoboam about not being the sluggard and not being slothful. And we get those names, slugs and sloths, even our, own, uh, even our animals that we name, based upon those words from the Bible. Help us to not be that. Help us to be diligent in our labor. Help us to work hard. Let's Help us to prioritize what truly is important. There's so many things clamoring for our time and attention, and it may be wise and prudent to choose correctly the things that are needful. Think of the Mary and Martha story there. And I just pray that we'd be wise in such matters. We ask that you'd 
also help us to appreciate the hours that we have to redeem the time. And I would hope that we all get our three score and ten or our four score and beyond. But should tragedy befall any of us, may we be, may we realize we've put forth an effort in whatever time frame that you've allowed us. We know even with our Lord's example of just 33 years, a whole world can be saved. A lot can be done. May we follow that great example. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Let me ask this question. The work of eternity, the work of Calvary, we see that Jesus gave so that we could be saved. Our works do not save us, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot work your way into heaven. There's not enough things you can do to earn heaven. Rather, salvation is the free gift paid for by our Lord when he died and shed his blood. And when we, by faith, receive the gift of eternal life, we are partakers of a heavenly home someday. Forgiveness and a rightness with God. But it only comes through receiving Christ as Savior. With heads bowed and eyes closed, is there anybody who'd say, Pastor, I, I don't know Jesus as Savior, but I'd like to. I'd like to know what it means to be saved. If that's you, just slip a hand up. I must work the works. Retired folks, you've earned the right. Enjoy it. You've put it forth. I think of all of our parents, for Jen and I, every single parent of ours, step-parents, parents, every single one of them have been incredibly hard workers. And they've given us a tremendous legacy of putting forth long hours, none of them in high-end paying jobs. Matter of fact, all of them more blue-collar work. Of course, Jen's uh, dad and stepmom here today as I preach. All now retired except for Jen's stepdad, but all have worked so hard. Let's be a good example to the next generations. I didn't know that there were dads that didn't go to work because my dad worked every single day that he was supposed to. My mom worked part-time when we were real young and full-time by the time we were school age. Lots of hours, lots of work. I must work the works of him that sent me. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, let's all stand. As we stand, the piano plays. As it does, the altar is open. About my eyes closed. Is there any who would say, Pastor, I should have raised my hand earlier about baptism. I, I, I've been saved but not baptized. Or I heard you earlier about baptism and I, and I didn't get that opportunity yet, but I do so now. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know Christ is Savior, but I'd like to know more about baptism. We'll baptize you tonight if you'd like. In the Bible, that same day they were saved, they were baptized. In the book of Acts chapter 2. Paul was baptized a season later, or a few days later, I should say. At the next opportunity, we'd love to share with you the importance of, of baptism. If that's you, just slip a hand up. We'd love to share with you the importance of baptism. Tonight, we could baptize you. I'd like to talk about a few things and make sure you understand what it is and why it is. But we could baptize you tonight right there at the Soto Pool. Would you slip a hand up if that's you? If you're watching from home and you'd like to know more about baptism, send the church an email. Reach out to the church. We'd love to talk to you about salvation first and foremost. Father in heaven, we're thankful for today, thankful for our church family, and not only do I see in my own family hard work, I also see it in the church family here. I know many of the retired age folk have earned that right. They're not like that young man under the tree. Why go through all that fuss? I'm already doing nothing. There's a difference, though, for those who've earned the right for some leisure in their golden years. May they still understand, though, that there's a work to do for you, Lord, and they can do that. And uh, while they forego the 
nine to five regular routine. May they find a niche to serve you also, Lord. And we're thankful again for the things you've done. We pray that you'd bless now. We give you the praise, honor, and glory for all that you do. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty, a couple of quick thoughts. Brother Frank, would you mind closing us in prayer in a minute? And um, uh, today at 5 o'clock at Soto House, make sure you grab a bulletin for the address. Even if you think you know where we live, unless you know you know where we live, it's easy to get turned around. Um, we'll have chicken that we bought. And if you can bring something to go with the chicken, if you already made some food, that's fine. Because I before called it a full potluck, but when I learned it might be 110 degrees, it's only going to be 107 though today, guys. So it's cooled down quite a bit for you. <laughs> but uh, around Thursday, I thought, ain't nobody wanting to go cook all day on a Sunday afternoon. So we said, let's just go buy, let's let Rayleigh's cook. So we have their cooking chicken for us. And uh, so bring something to go with the chicken if you could. That would be fantastic. And or a dessert, or we'll have. We also bought um, bottled waters, so there'll be plenty of water to drink. If you want anything besides the water, and uh, go ahead and bring that on your own, and something to potluck for to go with the chicken. That would be great. Five o'clock at our house, if you could make it. Ten, I'm sorry, eleven a.m. tomorrow morning at the brand new Olive Garden. That address is also in the bulletin for the senior saints. Now, some of you have tomorrow off. If you want to join us, please do so. And uh, we'll reserve for about 10 people there. If we have to make a couple tables, we'll do that. And uh, so 10, 11 o'clock tomorrow for senior saints. Friday night, 6 o'clock, teen activity. Saturday morning, 9 a.m. for prayer, 10 a.m. for breakfast, and then 5 p.m. for the awards dinner. This is the busiest week we've had since COVID for our church. We have something going, and Wednesday, of course, is church going on and all those wonderful things. So love to stay busy for the Lord. Brother Frank's going to close us in prayer. And Brother Frank, hard worker, uh, retired butcher, cut meat for all those years, also cooked in the uh, military and the Navy. Brother Frank did a lot of cooking at the church here, and uh, so he learned all those great traits while serving our great country. Brother Frank, close us in prayer if you would. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the message we had today and the labor that we put forth, Lord, that we want to bear the fruits, and we hope that we can reach the people of Sacramento, Lord, and we just pray that you'll be with each and every one of us as we go our separate ways today. Give us traveling mercies and keep us safe from all harm and danger. In Christ's name we ask, and amen. (laughs) 